is up, Bruins fans? Today I'm bringing you a clip from episode 361 of the Black Gold Hockey Podcast for Sam Smith and Mark Allred with special guest David Collins discuss their predictions for the Boston Bruins 2024-2025 season lines. So the three of us whipped up our projected lines for next se- for this upcoming season. And we're going to start with David. So Let's go through your forwards first as who do you think the forwards are going to be? We're going to have it up. We have a graphic we're going to put up on the screen, but our voices should still be there, hopefully. So let's go. David, let's take a look at your forwards, huh? Let's do it. Here we go. So what do we got? Run us All through. right. So, I mean, first line, pretty straightforward. You just signed Lynn Holm. Although I'm of the opinion that he's not a number one center, he's probably a very good second center. He is easily our best center. He gets the number one spot. The, the first line speaks for itself. Um, Coyle, the second line, uh, I think that that speaks for itself as well. He plays good with Marshawn. They like playing together. The first big question mark, obviously, is going to be the right wing on that second line. Um, Marshawn. Uh, had an interview where he was talking about what he expects from the guy that ends up playing that right wing. There's a couple different ways you could take it. Basically what he was saying is don't do too much play within yourself. He said that when he started out, he felt like he always had to do something every time he touched the puck. You could look at that as him saying like, I want to play with someone who knows their role, or it could be, here's a challenge to the young guys. This is what we expect of you. Can you live up to it? I think that plus the Jay Leach signing, plus them wanting to play with um, some younger players, I think they're going to give Lysel a chance. And I think this spot here makes the most sense. I could see Gigi up there. Um, I could see uh, Johnson up there. I could see a bunch of different options. But right now, if I was to put the team on the ice today, this is what I think it looks like. Um, I think Trent Frederick plays with Patra. Um, Geeky played well there last year. Um, I think, again, just makes too much sense. Uh, Max Jones plays with John Beach on the fourth line, and Justin Brazo uh, takes Castellick's spot. I'm not big on Castellick. I think he was more of a throw-in. I think he's a good extra forward to have. Maybe he'll, you know, possibly jump between um, Providence and the Bruins. He's always going to be great to have there in case of injuries and things like that. But as of right now, I don't think he makes the, the opening day roster. Now let's take a look at David's defense and his goalie situation. Let's take a look. Ooh. So, I mean, depending on how you look at this, this should be this should be pretty straightforward. Uh, Zadora plays with McAvoy. Lindholm plays with Carlo. Um, I don't think they want to have McAvoy and Lindholm on the same line. So I think this one makes the most sense. Um Mason Laura, Andrew Peak, again, um, it's the perfect third pairing, in my opinion. I think Laura is going to be an absolute stud in a couple of years. I love what he did in the playoffs last year. I love that he wasn't afraid to take shots when he got down below the blue line. Um, there was one that he had from like uh, the middle of the, the face-off circle on the left-hand side where he just went up over his shoulder. Like That's an amazing shot. I love to see it coming from a defenseman down low like that. Shades of Zdeno Chara. Um, mm-hmm. Parker Watherspoon, one of those guys that came in last year and really nailed down a spot, can definitely see them keeping him, uh, keeping him as the the extra defenseman. When it comes to Swayman, um, the contract that I think he's going to sign, I have him down for eight years at eight million per year. Um, I could see it going up to eight point five. I don't think they're going to go any higher than that, but I think they're going to put some language in that contract where Swayman feels okay coming down to eight to meet the Bruins. Um, I think this deal gets done. Like I said, at the, at the start of the show, I, I see no issue. I'm not stressed about this at all. Um, Corpus Allo beats out Bussy. Um, as we spoke about, uh, during our training camp segment, I think Bussy spends most of his time in Providence because they want to get him playing games, but I do understand the hesitation with trying to pass him through waivers, especially with a team like Vancouver, like it was mentioned before with, um, how much they love ex Bruins right now. So uh, I could definitely see uh, see them keeping it if there is rumblings that someone is going to try to take them off waivers. Um, so here's the full lineup. Zaka, Lindholm, Pashnak, straightforward. Marshawn Coyle with Lysel. Really think Lysel is going to make that push this year. Um, I think it's a make or break it, and he has to make this team 
to, to have a future with the Bruins right now. Uh, Frederick, Patra, Coyle, or sorry, uh, Geeky. Geeky played really well there last year. Frederick is a stud on the left side. I love him. Um, Matt Patra is going to step in there. Uh, Sam said he looks a little bit bigger. He I does. don't think Merkulov is going to push him. Um, Jones, really excited to see what he can do. Um, Beecher, I again, I think he's the perfect fourth line center. And Brazo is another one of those guys that came in last year and just he really showed what he could do. Um, he's big. He can skate fast. He's just he, – he is, to me, he is a Bruin. Um, the defense, like I said, I don't think they want to have McAvoy and Lindholm playing together. I also don't think they want to have Zadorov and Carlo playing together. So this just makes – it makes too much sense for me. And Corpus Allo beats out beats out Bussy for that that backup spot with uh, with Swayman signed an 8 by 8 Nice. Good Looks lineup. good. It look I I would be confident. I'd be confident. In, I was I was looking through all of our lines earlier. I would be confident with either any of our lineups that we put together. Um, Mark, let's go through your forwards, shall we? What do we got? Uh, all right. Um, so I have uh, Pavel Zaka on the left side, Elias Lindholm, uh, the centering, and uh, David Pasenak on the right. Brad Marchand, uh, Charlie Coyle, and uh, Morgan Geeky, your second line. Your third line, Trent Frederick, Matt Potra, Justin Brazo, your third line, um, Max Jones, John Beecher, and Mark Kostelik rounding out the fourth line. Um, I do not have Fabian Lysel in my lineup as of right now because um, he's got really got to prove uh, to the organization that he really wants this, um, this position. Um, I am not one of the fans out there that say he deserves uh, a, a shot there. Um, I think everything in the national hockey league or whatever league you play for those spots are earned. And to be honest with you, and I'm not saying I'm a better or I'm a, you know, a, a, the best freaking person around here to evaluate hockey players, but I do spend a lot of time more than I should watching the Providence Bruins and, and, and uh, players develop. I just haven't seen anything that really cries out to me to say that he deserves that spot. So hopefully this is the year that he comes through and, uh, and proves to the management that they picked him for a reason. And if he, if he doesn't make the lineup, I, I, I unfortunately think that his value would be really would plummet a little bit where to a point where it's very hard to move him. You'd probably have to package him with something else to get him out. Um, but it is up to him to um, clear whatever is between his two ears and, and, and grab the Rasa spot. Um, let me see. Uh, Matt Potra on the third line center. Um, now that uh, Tyler Johnson is involved, I, I think that Merkulov, Potra, and Johnson could uh, feasibly, uh, you know, capture those spots right there. Um but I would like to see Matty P uh, uh, come into this camp like he did last year and 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 really just surprise everybody. That would be great. And I know he had soul, shoulder surgery and so on. Um, and hopefully the, the, the long offseason, he healed well and he's ready to go. Um, I am a big fan of Justin Brazau. Mm -hmm. um, I actually was the one that broke the news of, of him signing a, um, a contract with the Boston Bruins. Um, he's just a guy and I know everybody hammers his speed. That's why he wasn't drafted. Um, and I think that he's another player like Bussy that when he's given an opportunity at a certain level, he just really drives to succeed. Um, uh, let me see Max Jones, a big guy, big guy. I think he would work very well with Beecher. Beecher's a good size kid. With some uh, with some offensive capabilities, and Mark Kostelik from the people I've talked to in Ottawa have said really good things about him. If he needs to drop the gloves, he can, but he could like lay a hit and uh, and 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 hurt somebody. So um, I think that's a really steady fourth line, and and obviously with camp coming up and so on, and the season starting on the uh, October eighth, this could definitely change. But that is my forward lineup. Get to your defenseman and your goaltending situation. You have a surprise in here. Let's take a look. I do have Zadorov and McAvoy 
uh, as the first uh, pairing. I know a lot of uh, folks out there are, are, are really hammering Lowry to be that guy, but I honestly think Lowry this year, it'll be his first full season with as the Boston Bruin. And I think that him working on uh, a third pairing with a guy like Andrew Peak um, would, would, would be beneficial for him and then move him up the lineup um, if if need be, uh, Lindholm to me and Carlo are, are are a decent pairing. I think I want to see a lot more from Lindholm this year. Mm-hmm. I was really disappointed in his uh, in, in his play last season. Um, but another player that's got to step up uh, in generating shots and, and opportunities from the blue line because he Lindholm does have the capabilities of of being a good player, um, and that's one of the reasons why the Boston Bruins traded for him. Um, and they traded a heavy price for him as well. Um, but yeah, there's my third pairings. Parker Witherspoon is, uh, would be my seventh guy. Um, saw him a ton in Providence and I'm so glad that the Providence Bruins were around so, so much to see him and, and pick him up when he was available. Uh, Jace Way is my guy in net, but like I said before, uh, in our, our, uh, training camp or, uh, no, it was a training camp conversation. I think Brandon Bussey is going to capture the backup role this year out of camp and beat out Eunice Coprasalo, the NHL veteran. So that's his full lineup right there. There it is. That's what he thinks, and I'm confident in that too. I would not be surprised if that's what we see on opening night. I How think about you, Sam? Was... Yeah. What about me? Well, here we go. Oh, let's... sorry. <laughs> let's have some fun. Um, here's what I got. So I got, of course, the top line. We all agree with that. Lindholm on the center, Zaka on the left side, Pasternak on the right side. They're not going to split up Zaka and Pasternak. They have a connection. We've seen it the past couple of years. They work well together. And Lindholm will be that center role. He's going to have, he's going to create. He knows how to create offense, open it up for Pasternak. I can't wait to see Lindholm and Pasternak together on the same line. It's going to work well, in my opinion. And I agree with Mark. I don't think Fabian LaSalle makes the opening night roster. And the reason and he's it's going to be Coyle, Marchand, and Geeky, because I don't think LaSalle has it in here or in here. Not yet. I think he is very immature. Now, I want him to shut me up, and I want him to make it. But I don't think he will. I think he's going to start in Providence. Now, who's to say he could come up during the middle of the season if he's undeniable, and that's great. But I don't think he has it within him to be on the NHL roster. He went home all summer to Sweden and trained there. If he wanted it more, he would have stayed here and trained. Agreed. With with the Bruins coaches in the Bruins organization, the team he wants to play for, the Bruins. That's my opinion. I think Geeky makes it over LaSalle. Um, third line. This is a weird one. Matt Potra, Max Jones, Trent Frederick. I am sold on Max Jones. I am absolutely sold on him. I think he is absolutely going to be fitting perfectly in that Bruin third line role. Trent Frederick's going to play the right side. Patra will be protected. He's bigger, but he's still not bigger. He's still not as big as Jones and Frederick, obviously. Jones and Frederick will pot- will protect Patra in those situations, and he will be able to escape out of the situations that he was in last year along the wall where he was getting crushed a few times. That won't happen as often because you have two enforcers there and Max Jones, who's a big dude, and Trent Frederick, big dude. It makes sense. <laughs> Fourth line, Beecher, Kostelik, Brazo. Beecher and Kostelik are swap. They can swap either way. Uh Beecher could be better on the draw. Costello could be better on the draw. I don't know. I think Beecher is going to be playing the middle when moving up the ice. He's going to be acting like the center, even though Costello could be taking the faceoffs. Kind of like how they listed it last year. They had uh, Bequist, Be- Beecher, Boquist, and, and uh, Brazil on the fourth line. Boquist was, the, was listed as the center, even though he played the wing. I think Beecher could be the same thing as acting as the center, even though... Uh, Costello could be taking the draws. Who knows? Um, Beecher and Brazo, they played last year. They have chemistry. 
Kostelik will be good for faceoffs if, if Beecher needs help, and that's what I have listed for that. So that's what I think Beecher, Kostelik, Brazo for the fourth line for next uh, season. Uh, Sam, defense, yeah, Sam, I totally forgot about Kostelik's uh, faceoffs. Yeah, Kostelik's a good center. He can take yeah. faceoffs. I have absolutely he absolutely can. Um, defense and goalie. I agree with the defensive situation. Zadorov's going to play with McAvoy. McAvoy, since Chara, hasn't really had a solidified left defenseman that has been trustworthy. Grizzlick, small, a lot of mistakes, turning over the puck in his own zone. Don't see a lot of that as Zadorov. Lindholm and McAvoy, they just didn't mesh well together. Lorai and McAvoy, that's going to be your defensive core of the future. But for right now, Zadorov and McAvoy is going to be um, your top defensive pairing. Lindholm and Carlo, they have experience together. They play all they played together pretty much all last year, and they were fine. They were serviceable. They were a decent pairing together. They're going to be great on the penalty kill. I think that's going to be a, not a bad thing. And then Lorai and Peak. Peak's going to help develop Lorai into a versatile defenseman who, who can play up and down the lineup, kind of like what the defensive version of Danton Heinen was last year. Heinen could play first line could, and looked good. He can play fourth line and look good. Lorai's going to do the same thing. He's going to look good on the top. He's going to look good on the bottom, in my opinion. And, of course, Watherspoon's going to slide in. I don't expect him to get 15, 20, 25 games next year because I think they want a seven defenseman rotation because they want to make sure guys are healthy throughout the season. So if Carlo or Peak or Lorai or whoever needs a night off, Watherspoon will slide right in. No problem. And there will be no issues because I trust Watherspoon completely. I think he's a great defenseman, good good job moving the puck, good in his own end, can keep pucks in at the line when pucks come close to getting out of the zone. I'm not worried about that. I think Watherspoon knows that. He's going to have his seventh defenseman role, and he'll get some time next year for sure. And Swayman's going to be your starter. Obviously, they're not that dumb. And Jonas Corposalo is going to be the backup as an insurance blanket. He's going to be your insurance policy. If for some reason, God forbid, Swayman gets hurt, Corposalo is an NHL level goaltender that can be your starter while he's out, and Bussy can come right in. No problem. I expect to see Bussy next this upcoming season at some point, at in some capacity. I expect it. But for right now, opening night, Swayman and Corposalo is your goaltending tandem. And there it is. There's your full lineup. So, again, you have Zaka, Lindholm, Pasternak, Coyle, Marshawn, Geeky, Patra, Frederick, and Jones, Kostelik, Beecher, Brazo, Zadorov, McAvoy, Lindholm, Carlo, Lorai, Peak with Swayman and Corposalo. So, that's what I think is going to happen. Now, do I, again, do I want LaSalle to make the roster? Absolutely. Do I think he will? No. He's got to prove me wrong. So. Yep. No, that's fair. You know, it, it's he's he's a prospect that needs to show what he's capable of, you know, and, and, and the, the, the red carpet's out in front of him right now, you know. So I think he I think he has the stuff to do it. He's got the talent to do it. But like you said, it's the heart and, and what's in between the two uh, his two ears that is actually going to get him that that spot and capture it. I think they've given him they've given him everything. Like there's an open right wing spot. They've brought up Jay Leach. Like you said, it's there. The, the opportunity is his. He just got to come and take it. He's got to take it. And I, I, I do. I don't know. I, I honestly don't know. Like if, if LaSalle makes it great, if he doesn't, then what do you do? Then what do you do? If LaSalle makes it, then Kostelik doesn't make the roster because he's the first one I'm eliminating. If LaSalle makes it. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And, you, and, and Lysel on the fourth line. Sorry. No, yeah, no, no. You, if he's going to be on the fourth line, send him to Providence. He's, no. And that, that's what I'm saying. Castellic will be the first one out because they're going to shuffle around the bottom six. If LaSalle makes it, they're going to put Beecher in the center. Jo they're going to put Frederick on the third left wing. Geeky will be the third right wing to Patra. Then it will be Beecher on the center on the fourth line with Jones and Brazo on either side of them. That's your bottom six if LaSalle makes it. Castellic yeah. will go to Providence or be your 13th forward. Because you still want to put Lysel, a, a, a guy that has no games, you want to put him on the line with talent. He's yeah. got the talent. Put him with the talent. Don't put him with a bunch of bruises that are just going to hit everybody. Right, exactly. 
Um, so that's what I think is going to happen. Um, Good lineups. Like what you saw? Be sure to come back next week for episode 362 of the Black and Gold Hockey Podcast, where host Sam Smith and Mark Allred will discuss the upcoming 2024-2025 season. See you then.